Independence is not a distraction from the task of post-COVID reconstruction. It is essential to getting that right. Of course, we won't wait to be independent to start doing the right things now. I'm about to give you concrete examples of how, even in areas that are still substantially reserved to Westminster, the Scottish Government is nevertheless acting now to rebuild and renew. And as I do so, ask yourself this. If this is what we can do with limited powers, how much more could we achieve if we didn't have one hand tied behind our backs? Take Social Security. The pandemic has reinforced, as never before, the necessity of strong social protection that will be there for all of us in times of need. For many people in Scotland, the post-war welfare state has been a reason to support the union. But both the values and the practical measures that underpin that system are being dismantled by Westminster governments we don't vote for. When the pandemic hit, the UK had one of the lowest levels of statutory sick pay in the whole of Europe. It still does. Brutal cuts to welfare have forced families into poverty and taken hundreds, even thousands of pounds a year out of the pockets of those who can least afford it. Westminster has given us the bedroom tax, benefit sanctions, the two child cap and the abhorrent rape clause. And the rhetoric has sought to divide and stigmatise. We take a different approach. On Saturday, John Swinney made the truly landmark commitment that if we are re-elected next May, lunches and breakfasts will be available free of charge all year round for every primary school child in Scotland. This, alongside the baby box and the doubling of early years education, is part of our commitment to making Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. At the heart of that commitment is the new Scottish child payment. We will shortly become the only part of the UK to give low-income families an extra £10 a week for every child, initially for children up to age six and then for every child up to age 16. This has been described as a game changer in the fight to end child poverty. The first payments will be made in February. But I know that for families struggling now, February is still a long way off. So I am announcing today a £100 million package to bridge that gap and help others struggling most with the impact of COVID over the winter months.